All right, going to be doing a video here today. I'm going to pretty much just get right into it. I'm not going to wait for a lot of people to come around. Um, and uh, going to be doing this thing answering Andrew Schluter talking about this. Okay, I don't, I don't think it caught the first part of what I was saying there. <laughs> I'll start over. I'm going to be answering Andrew Schluter, uh, this guy right here, right there. I don't have that. Oh, wait, I'm not sharing the screen yet. Just give me a minute. Um, share screen. I'll do that one. Share screen. Uh, this one. Sure. Okay. This guy here is um, I'm talking about. Wait till this thing. Comes up here and make sure everything's working good. Um, but you can see this guy right here is the one I'm going to be answering here. This Andrew Schluter. Um, you know, there's a teaching that he did down in here. Jesus burned in hell. It's only nine minutes and 22 seconds long. So we're going to look at that and I'm going to refute it. Um, it's a blasphemous teaching. Stephen Anderson came out with it years ago and, and, uh, it's funny because Joyce Meyer, uh, the female preacher, she had a thing on Jesus burning in hell. Kenneth Copeland teaches that, that uh, you know, Jesus burned in hell. So hi, everybody. Um, but before I get into that, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Literally just saw this um, here. This is, I guess, yesterday. This was up on the main page here on YouTube. Um, L.A. City COVID-19 update. They're going to cut water and power to homes hosting large gatherings amid pandemic. So literally, if you have people coming together in your home, they send the police out and uh, they're going to shut down your power and your water. I mean, it's an act of war. You can't do that. You know, I don't care how bad a supposed pandemic is. You can't shut somebody's power and water off. This is insanity. I mean, they, they, people just need to openly rebel against the government at this point in time. It's it's tyrannical. Yeah, uh, uh, New York City has has set up roadblocks in the city. Also, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, but listen to what he says. Cracks me up. Watch this. But all the sacrifices can be undone by those who refuse to follow the science and who refuse to follow the rules. <laughs> refuse to follow the science. Uh, there is no science behind this whole coronavirus thing. Germany, stay three feet apart. America, stay six feet apart. Um, you might have symptoms, but you might not. You might be asymptomatic. You should wear a mask, mask in case you're sick and you don't want to give it to other people. Wait, no, you should wear a mask because you're healthy and there's somebody sick is going to put their spit in onto you or whatever else it might get in your mouth. Science? Are you kidding me? There is no science in this whole thing. It's just an open war of aggression against the people. So, you know, and New York, like one of you said, New York City is, is you know, making, uh, uh, you know, what do they call it, uh, roadblocks or whatever else. I mean, just crazy. But found this interesting little thing here. Founder of the CDC, Joseph Walter Mountain, MD, was an American physician and career United States Public Health Service officer who was the founder of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the one with all this coronavirus stuff, and prevention in Atlanta, Georgia. Mountain eventually became an assistant surgeon general, born uh, October 13th, 1891, and he went to Marquette University. Marquette University is a Jesuit school. So, um, yeah, the CDC founded by a Jesuit, Robert Redfield, current head of the CDC, another Jesuit. Um, so there you go. This one here I thought was really interesting. Edward Jenner. This is the guy who created vaccination, the medical doctor who created vaccination. Um, not a Jesuit that I can find anyways, but uh, you say, well, then what's the connection there? Well, uh, you get down here. He became a master mason on 30th December 1802 in Lodge of Faith and Friendship number 449 from 1812 to 1813. He served as worshipful master of Royal Berkeley Lodge of Faith and Friendship. Okay, you go to uh, Edward Jenner biography right there, Grand Lodge of British Columbia and Yukon right there. 
there he is. So their website, Freemasonry, British Columbia, Canada. Let me zoom in on that so people can see a little bit better. There he is. The founder of vaccination back in the 1800s. Um, a Freemason. Freemasonry is controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. Huh. Another interesting little thing. And I, I saw one of you posted this in the comments. And I thought this was kind of interesting. This is the National Catholic Reporter. Okay. Catholic website. And it says, is St. Corona the patron saint of pandemics? St. Corona. <laughs> yeah. Um, were you out of quarantine, boredom, perhaps, to Google patron saint of pandemics? You might be surprised by the results. It's incredible, but it's seemingly true. There is a saint. Let me zoom in here a little bit more so you can see this. There is a St. Corona, and she is one of the patrons of pandemics, according to the website of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Lansing, Michigan. Even more incredible, the diocese claims the remains of the second century saint are in northern Italy, the epicenter of a recent outbreak of the coronavirus in Europe. What a coincidence. Oh boy, you know, imagine that. Um, so, you know, but you get down through here and it says basically that she's not really the saint of the, you know, pandemic thing or whatever else, but she might be, you know, so... Um, should St. Corona be associated with any healing miracles during the current coronavirus pandemic? Her new patronage just may stick. I prefer they didn't, but if enough people decided St. Corona was the patron saint of the coronavirus, she's just going to become that, Moss said. Um, by popular acclaim of the internet, she already may be on her way. <laughs> Think. No way. You know, it's just insane. So, there you go. Uh, it's all tying back to the Catholic Church, this whole coronavirus thing. It's just insane. So, yeah, enough of that. Um, more nonsense. But here's my secondary channel. If you, haven't, if you don't know about that, uh, you can check it out if you want to. There's a bunch of videos over here. I was putting up some videos on this because um, I, I, when my main channel got a copyright strike or some kind of a offensive strike or whatever it was I was posting videos on this channel for a while and so that's why there's a bunch of things on here that are not on the other channel but down here if you go down to right there um, and refuting Stephen Anderson's teaching that Jesus burned in hell okay so this is five years ago 19,000 views on that video um, this whole thing uh, about Jesus burning in hell. It's not some new teaching. Like I said, the charismatics have been teaching this for a while. Um, I mean, Ruckman has openly been against this thing different times. Peter Ruckman, um, Andrew Sluter tries to pretend that Peter Ruckman taught this. He did not. That's insane. Uh, you're going to see this Andrew Sluter guy. Um, a lot of these guys, they followed Ruckman and they just think that he's just God on earth or something, you know. And, and of course, they'd say, no, we, we don't. We disagree some areas, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, they they don't know the Bible themselves. They just learn from Peter Ruckman. And, you know, I've learned a lot from Ruckman. I've benefited a lot from Peter Ruckman. But you know what? Uh, there's a lot of areas he's just dead wrong on. And, you know, a man has to go his own way. Every one of us shall give him account of himself to God. So, uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that guy. There we go. Had to get rid of somebody over there in the comments. So, see ya. Um, but anyway, so, I, you know, this has been out for a while. Andrew Sluter has no excuse of, oh, you know, I just found some new thing and whatever else, you know. Um, but the reason I'm answering this, you'd say, well, why are you answering it? Because you already did, you know, uh, years ago five years ago whatever why would you bother taking the time to answer it well he came up with some new arguments that i haven't heard before and so i kind of thought okay you know unless somebody should say oh he hasn't nobody's can answer him his arguments are stupid very stupid and i'm going to go over those uh, real quickly here we're going to watch this video i'll apologize in advance for uh subjecting my viewers to this level of 
insane stupidity. Now, all, all these guys, Baptist church pastors, every single one of them, they get messed up because they just refuse to give up their unscriptural traditions of their church building, and they just go off on the deep end. And they'll get really, really messed up a lot of times the more they go, including Peter Ruckman, including any guy that's ever had a church building. When you know it's not in the New Testament and there's a whole lot of problems with church building, it's not just, well, it wasn't there, but we do it now. No, they had synagogues. Okay, I mean, if the Lord wanted to, it's not that the Lord kind of forgot to say about having church buildings. If the Lord wanted Christians in the New Testament to have church buildings, he'd just say, see the synagogues that the Jews have over there? Yeah, build one yourself and we'll call it a church. But the Lord didn't do that. And there's a reason for that because it messes people up when they get to this level of insanity. Well, let's watch this video here and I'm going to be pausing it and showing from the scriptures why he's wrong. All right, we'll try to keep this going pretty quickly. Hey guys, it's Andrew Sluder, pastor of Bible Baptist Church here in Asheville, North Carolina. Wanted to come to you with a interesting and maybe somewhat controversial video on Jesus actually did burn in hell. Now, we are Bible believers, okay? The Bible is the final authority for us. And okay, it's, it's my, we're Bible believers, so why do you have a church? Uh, there is no such thing in Scripture. See, it lies to you right off the bat. And, uh, you know, um, you know, it's it's a controversial thing. And, you know, some people might get a little mad. Uh, but, you know, the teaching that uh, Jesus, you know, burned in hell. Um, OK, right off the bat, where does the Bible say Jesus burned in hell? Nowhere. His soul went down to hell. Nowhere does it say burned at all. So uh, we're Bible believers, you know. No, you're not. You're a liar. And yeah, exactly, Jacob, Brother Jacob there, um, he's monetized. Andrew Schluter's monetized. So watch out from that or for that. But let's continue. All matters of faith and practice. And so what it says, we believe, even if it goes contrary to something we may have been taught or something we may have believed in the past. And so uh, we're going to look at this issue on did Jesus burn in hell? And uh, I emphatic emphatically say yes he did and here's why let's first of all just look at the basic uh, uh basic text you ready psalms chapter 16 and verse number 10 thou wilt not suffer thine holy one thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither suffer thine holy one to see corruption okay um wouldn't burning equal corruption okay uh, un again understand if you're new to everything here if you don't understand Old Testament saints went down to the, a place called Abraham's bosom. It was collectively called hell, all right? But there were people that were not burning, souls that were not burning, and ones that were. The people that were burning were in hell in terms of burning down there. The others were in Abraham's bosom. That's why Jesus Christ uh, in the New Testament there in the book of Luke, you see he goes, he talks about the rich man and Lazarus in hell, all right? Then the rich man's burning, Lazarus is not. It's right there. It's not some kind of a parable or some symbolic story or whatever else. So the soul went down there to hell, but he didn't burn. You know why? Because the Bible doesn't say that Jesus burned. There's not a verse of scripture that says anything at all about the Lord burning. None. Let's continue. So Psalms chapter 16 and verse number 10 is very clear. It's a prophecy concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter uses that same verse and quotes it in Acts chapter 2, verse number 31 at Pentecost when convincing those people of the resurrection of Jesus, okay? So he, he quotes that verse. Now, here's the issue, though. The question arises, if Jesus did burn in hell, how long was he there? There are some who teach that, uh, he burned in hell for three days and three nights, the entirety of him being dead. I reject that, though, because if you look at Luke chapter number 23 and verse number 43, as Jesus is hanging there on the cross, there's only seven recorded sayings of Jesus on the cross. He looks over at that thief on his right side, and he says, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, if you study the Bible. Actually, a correction there, Sluter, it's shalt thou, not thou shalt. You've departed from the Bible by just coming out with your stupid videos, so why bother being pecky, I guess? In Genesis 1, we find the precedent for days. It's evening and morning. 
So that evening would have started a brand new day. So by sunset, Jesus has to be with this dying thief, who, who, who would be dead, obviously, by then. He has to be with that thief in paradise by sunset that evening, okay? Or else he's a liar. So we find there today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. So Jesus did not burn for the entirety of the three days and three nights that he's uh, dead. What we do find, though, and I think the Bible is very clear on it, is that he burned in hell for a very brief period of time. I okay. Now, let's just think about this. Okay. Um, Jesus burned in hell for a brief period of time. Okay. Then how does that represent a sinner burning in hell? Jesus had to go to hell and he had to burn, you know, to, to, to kind of take our sins down there and burn them and what. So lost people just go to hell for a brief period of time. Three hours is what he's going to be teaching here. Huh? You know? Okay. Um, and the, the video I did um, back with the uh, Anderson thing right here, this refuting Stephen Anderson's teaching that Jesus burned in hell. He actually has uh, Paul Wittenberger, his Hollywood filmmaker, no joke. And um, it goes to Anderson's church there. They're buddy, buddy and everything else. And he, uh, Paul Wittenberger in Anderson's church says that Jesus is burning forever in hell. I show the clips if you want to watch it. I'm not going to for sake of time, but I showed it. And Stephen Anderson's sitting there and he says, Amen. So Jesus is burning forever in hell. How's that going to work with him ruling on the earth for a thousand years? You know, you know, the, there'll be a little sign there. You know, sorry, I can't rule on the throne because I'm too busy burning in hell. You know. <laughs> Because they're such heretics. I mean, there's there's some good heresies out there that are really deceptive and whatever else. But then there's just some stupid stuff that you just look at this and you think, huh? So, but it, it gets worse. Let's continue. I believe the three hours of darkness from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. If you look at Matthew chapter number 27 and verse 46, and also John chapter 19 and verse 28, we find that Jesus says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, yeah, because he became sin, who knew no sin. That was when imputation happened. He took our sins upon himself and died on the cross in our place to pay for our sins. That's, you know, that's what's going on there. Jesus became sin. Doesn't mean that he's burning in hell. Continue. And then we also find him saying, I thirst. Both of those statements would have taken place during the three hours of darkness while Jesus is hanging on the cross. Those two statements are exactly what a man in hell would be describing. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because if you go to hell, you're forsaken by God. Okay. Um, where in the Bible does anybody in hell say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? exactly what a man would say in hell okay then give us a scripture that has a man in hell saying that See, he's lying I'm a Bible believer I'm a Bible believer in all matters of faith and practice they, they you know he learned that from Ruckman okay and Ruckman was lying when he said it thank the Lord for dr. Ruckman but he lied he wasn't a Bible believer in all matters of faith and practice he didn't practice what the King James Bible says. Not at all. And he admitted it. I, again, I'm not I'm not being mean to Ruckman. I'm just saying he admitted. He said that the minute you get a church building, you are now anti-New Testament. I have the video proof in his one book that he wrote. It. Again, I'm not slandering Ruckman or anything else. That's what he said. He was not a Bible believer in practice. But let's continue. And I thirst. We find that, that was the cry of the rich man in Luke chapter number 16 that went to hell. Now, if you look back to Psalms chapter 22 and verse number 6, we find a messianic psalm concerning Jesus Christ being crucified. And in fact, some scholars think that the entire... Uh, some scholars think... Uh, when should, since when should we refer to scholars? 
than what they think. When, why should we even care about scholars? Like that's some kind of, oh, oh the scholars think it. Oh, man. Continue. The psalm, Psalms 22, would have been quoted by Christ while he's hanging on the cross. Now, the beginning of that psalm starts out, verse number one, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But if you look down at verse number six of Psalms 22, you find Jesus makes this statement. But I am a worm and no man. Now, we know that in hell, there are worms. Isaiah chapter 14 talks about worms being under and worms covering. We find that Jesus says that in hell in Mark chapter number nine, where their worm dieth not, neither is the fire quenched. So we know that worms are in direct connection with hell. Now, Jesus. Okay. Um, so I guess, in other words, according to rocket scientist Sluter here, um, when John the Baptist looks and says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. There was a little lamb walking on. You know, uh, uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh, he's a lion. Symbolic, brethren, obviously. You know. Continue. He makes this statement, but I'm a worm and no man. We also find now in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, where the Bible says that Jesus was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, I'm going to tell you what I believe. Dr. Rutman taught this, and I believe this as well. I believe that Jesus Christ literally became sin on the cross. I believe that Jesus Christ. So he's right on that. Jesus Christ literally became sin on the cross. Yeah. And this is how these slick devils will do it. They'll tell you truth, and then they'll flip right around and tell you heresy and say, this is what Ruckman taught, this is what I believe is the truth, and they'll do it real quick, and then they'll, they'll skip to the next point. Watch it. Became a worm while on the cross. I, he believes that Jesus became a worm while on the cross. Uh, why didn't anybody say anything about it? He literally, literally, he didn't say, Symbolically, he said, literally became a worm on the cross. You know, how did that work? You know, the centurion comes up and looks up at Jesus, died, you know, he's, he's dead there, and he says, Surely this is the Son of God. No, surely this is a really big worm. Whoa, I just, he was a man a minute ago. What happened? <laughs> I mean, it, hello, anybody home? You know. <laughs> Okay, here we go. I believe that Jesus Christ took sin on himself and was literally changed on the cross, those three hours of darkness. The Bible says, but I am <laughs> changed on the cross. Okay, uh, why didn't anybody report it? Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, hello, where are you? Uh, you know, looking at Jesus dying and they're sad and, and everything and and, uh, oh, he just turned into a worm. Whoa, you know, for three hours, he's a worm. Continue. A worm and no man. If you study the Bible out and you look at it, the Bible says that a man loses his own soul. Now, if Jesus Christ is taking the penalty of a man, taking the penalty of a sinner, he would have lost his own soul while on the cross. And when a man goes to hell, he loses his own soul. The Bible says, as Jesus Christ, John chapter 3, verse 14, as the son of, or excuse me, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Understand, notice, Moses lifted up that brazen serpent on the, uh, 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 on a pole. It's interesting that the, the, uh, the symbol for medical uh, on the side of, a, uh, of an ambulance or hospitals or whatever, it's a pole with a serpent wrapped around it. I believe that Jesus Christ became a worm on the cross. He lost his own soul. His <laughs> soul, when it happened, they, they just, everybody said, oh, hey, there's something we can put on the side of ambulances. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, there's a lot more occultic stuff going on there with the, the snake and the symbol and everything there and the, but you know he just he just kind of throws a little gem there like that you go, oh wow you know you get the gullible people that way 
get them to believe a stupid heresy that Jesus had to burn in hell to pay for your sins. Let's continue. Soul would have gone to hell during those three hours of darkness. That is why Isaiah chapter 53 and verse number 10 says this. It says that his soul was made an offering for sin. Now, we find a precedent for this. You say, well, that sounds a little out there. Well, that's fine. Listen, the Bible is a deep book. I mean, the Bible is a book that you can never exhaust it. There are and you clearly don't, clearly don't understand it. I don't know the guy's testimony, but I've, I've dealt with some of these Baptists over the years. A lot of them, they get saved you know, saved in Sunday school. Um, I was, you know, four years old or five years old or something. And, and I, you know, that's when I became a born again Christian. And, and I've been saved ever since then. Or, uh, yeah, you got to watch out for this stuff. And then they learn, they get a big head full of knowledge from listening to a Bible preacher or teacher. And then they think they're called to preach and whatever. But let's continue. The truths in there that we are never going to see till we get to heaven. But Jonah, the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 39 and 40, that Jesus Christ was not going to give that wicked generation a sign except for the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he says, as Jonas was in the belly of the well three days and three nights, even so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. But now notice he's in paradise. Remember, he has to go to paradise with that thief. He's in the heart of the earth with that thief. In paradise, Abraham's bosom. But those three hours of darkness, he's in hell. Because if you remember Jonah, in Jonah chapter 2, if you read it and just literally believe it, study it out, read it, and believe it, exactly what it says. The Bible says in Jonah chapter 2 and verse number 2, he says, out of the belly of hell cried I. If you read Jonah chapter 2 and look at the wording, it says that the seaweed was wrapped around his head. The, the, the waves of sorrow uh, can pass them even to the soul. Jonah drowns first. Jonah drowns in the sea. He was at the bottom of the mountains, the Bible says, in Jonah 2. Jo uh, I thought the Bible said that he's in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Jonah drowns, dies. And it's interesting, Jonah would have died from asphyxiation, right? That's how how people died on the cross with asphyxiation. Jonah dies of drowning. He goes to hell. He cries out of the belly of hell, and then he goes into the belly of the whale for those three days and three nights. Folks, I believe that the Bible teaches that Jesus went to hell. His soul was not left in hell, but it wasn't for three days and three nights. I believe it was the three hours of darkness his soul was made an offering for sin. And Jesus Christ didn't just listen for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He didn't just take the penalty of physical death, but thank God he also took the penalty of the second death, which is the lake of fire, hell for all of eternity. He, uh, hell and lake of fire, two different things there, partner. And, and you know, okay, so let's just think about this for a minute. If you're a sinner, Okay, and you come to Jesus Christ for salvation. The blood that he shed on the cross, death, burial, resurrection, that's the gospel. First Corinthians 15, verses one through four. It's right there. There's not a word about, oh, but you know, you're you're gonna burn. You need to, there's something that needs to be burned here, or whatever. The blood, it's just there, washes away your sins, boom, you're saved. There's no, well, yeah, but you have to, can, you know, you, we need to burn you somehow. I guess it's got to be the Lord that burns in your place. No, it's not there. The blood is there. Okay. I mean, I mean let me just show you a, a couple of scriptures here. If you're newly saved or whatever else, just so you can get through the lie, through the lie of this, this incredible nut. Colossians 1 verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Uh, no, it's well, the blood's there. Yeah, he shed on the cross. That's the physical suffering he did. But then the spiritual was burning in hell. Um, well, that's a problem, too, because you see what Jesus says in you know, the Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 and verse... 28 
And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to de destroy both soul and body in hell. Huh. But Sluter here is saying it's just the soul that goes there. Soul and body in hell. And how does that work? Um, you know, fear him, you know, that, that's able to, to, you know, destroy both soul and body in hell. So does he believe that Jesus is God? He says he does. Did a video we're going to look at here in just a minute on the, the Godhead versus Trinity issue. And he says that, you know, Jesus is the father in, you know, he's God in, in terms of father, son, and Holy Ghost all in one being. Well, how does that work? You know, fear him. I'm talking about myself. That's able to destroy both body and soul in hell. But the body doesn't go. It's just the soul that goes. So the body doesn't get, you know, there's no corruption. His flesh doesn't see corruption, but the soul goes to hell. But it's, you know. And there's a real good verse coming up here. I'm going to show you that just totally destroys this whole thing of Jesus burning in hell. But uh, let's continue. Pay that for us as well. And what you got to understand, especially if you read Psalms 22, the crucifixion was much more than just a physical thing. It was also a spiritual thing. It was a spiritual death as well. And thank God he did it all for us. So, folks, Jesus. Uh, spiritual death? Jesus died physically, but he died spiritually as well? Okay. Uh, chapter and verse, please. See, he's monetized. Like his buddies Breaker and Kim, you know Robert Breaker, Gene Kim. That you know the reason he still he has uh, two point four five, you know, not even two and a half thousand subscribers. Is he, Andrew, you know, Andy, um, you need to get a whiteboard, okay? I mean, once you get the whiteboard and cover the whole surface behind it, you know, a little cheesy wooden thing, that's yeah, not gonna work. You need to have the whiteboard, okay? And bad lighting and everything, like your two buddies do, and and then you then you'll go places. All right, you know your monetization is, you know, letting Google, you know, pay you and everything. That's a brilliant idea as a Christian, but uh, you know that's the problem here. But you got you know the, your the clickbait thing. Yeah, it is. You're on your way to becoming a big, you know, subscriber. You also want to get the robots that'll, you know, do the fake subscriptions like Robert Breaker does, and probably Gene Kim as well, I imagine, but. The, you need to learn the game a little bit more here. Of course, I guess you don't want to get too big too quick because then it might make people suspicious. So, you know, just some advice from somebody who was on YouTube a lot longer than Breaker and Gene Kim. Just some advice. Okay. Take it or leave it. See, yeah, I'm being nice. Let's finish up here. Just did burn in hell. He took your death. He took your hail. And he took it on. He took your hail. Um, okay. You know, uh, where does the Bible say that? Where does it say I have to have hell somehow? Where does the Bible say that? See, here's the whole thing. You need to be trained. When these guys say this stuff, you, know, you need to know your Bible. And you can say, wait a second, where does the Bible say this? I deserve hell? Well, sure, but I got saved. I don't deserve hell anymore. There's no your hell. Let's continue. On himself and he died in our place and thank God he rose again three days later now he's seated in heaven waiting anybody who will call upon him he can save you the uttermost. Folks I hope you've learned something and I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and God bless you as my friend. Yeah. Let's go to his uh, channel here and uh, his Trinity thing. Because um, I'll show you something interesting that he says about the Trinity. Uh, and, oh, and he came out with this thing here recently, too, by the way, about that the rapture will be in 2033. Not clickbait. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think so. Um. You know, I'm just going to go up here. I don't want to go down through everything he does. Uh, 
Uh, sorry about this. I'm trying to find the video. Is it under Godhead, perhaps? Yeah. Okay, I'm not seeing the Trinity thing. But he basically teaches that, uh, you know, the uh, um, Godhead is, is, he teaches it the right way. Um, okay, just search for it. Uh, did he take it down, I guess? Yeah, okay, the Trinity explained. There it is. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Close player. There we go. Hit the wrong thing. Church here in Asheville, North Carolina. Yep. Okay. And here he goes in and up here. Watch this. God, that's Colossians chapter number one and verse number 15, who is the image of the invisible God. So, guys, watch this. God the Father is the spirit. Jesus is the body and the Holy Ghost is the soul. Okay. Well, then, Sluter, um, if the Holy Ghost is the soul, just said it, was it the Holy Ghost that burned in hell? Because he said his soul went down to hell. You see? You see the problem these guys get into? Um, so, thank you, brother. That was, uh, I was thinking it was on his, but again, the, see the mess that these guys get themselves into. But, uh, yeah. So I guess he actually deleted I wasn't even aware of that. Um, but uh, he came out with this other video, which we're not going to waste time on. But the uh, clarification video on Jesus burning in hell. And he plays this guy at this Bad Attitude Baptist blowout. This, I think his name was Bobby Uplet or, or Utley or something. Uplet. <laughs> Utley. And, um, and so, you know, this proves somehow because he taught the same thing that Sluter taught. Then Ruckman stands up at the end and says, you know, he's right that Jesus became a worm and whatever. Um, Okay, uh, that doesn't prove anything, you know. And I wrote a comment and I said, you know, it just proves you just found somebody as dumb as you are, essentially, you know, as big of a heretic as you are. So, well, let me show you some scriptures here. Let's go over some scriptures. Um, I'm gonna go back here and uh, stop sharing. Um, actually, you know what? I do. I need to continue sharing. What am I thinking? Because I'm gonna show you the. Uh, um, Got to show you the the sword searcher. There we go. Okay. Um, hopefully you can see that. Sorry about that. Little confusion there. Um, let's go to the Old Testament here, to the book of Leviticus. Very interesting thing here. I remember a brother brought this up to me after I did the whole Anderson uh, exposed thing, but Check this out. Leviticus chapter 2, verse 11. No meat offering which ye shall burn unto the Lord shall be made with leaven, for ye shall burn no leaven, nor any honey in any offering of the Lord made by fire. So it's talking about meat offerings there and doing things by fire. But check this out. Verse 12. As for the oblation of the first fruits, remember that, ye shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savor. The first fruits are not to be burnt on the altar. Hmm. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 through 23. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits. Of them that slept for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits I mean right there Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ said his coming so according to the Levitical law 
you can't burn the first fruits. Jesus Christ is the first fruits. There is no possible way that Jesus could have been burned or that his soul could have been burned. That is nonsense. And how about the actual scripture that talks about what Jesus did when he went down there to hell in the Old Testament? Ephesians chapter 4. Remember, Jesus Christ brought in the New Testament with his death, right? And burial and resurrection. That's the New Testament. New Testament is not Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, up until the time Jesus dies on the cross, is doctrinally in the Old Testament, right? Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, what did Jesus do when he was down there in hell? Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He went down, got the saints out of the Old Testament, from the Old Testament, down there in Abraham's bosom, and he took them up, right? Look at this, verse 9. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. It tells you plainly what Jesus Christ did. Just as plain as day, right? Let me put this over here like that, because you can already still see me there. So, um, But right there it is. It does does it say anything at all in here about Jesus had to burn? You know, he went down there to hell and, and he burned for a while to pay for your sins and and uh you know he just it, it's so good that he took our spiritual punishment of burning, you know, and, and he he died on the cross and that wasn't quite enough. He just had to go down and he had to burn for a while. See, and again, Andrew Sluter and his his other thing there, he says about you know, it's not a big issue, you know, if somebody wants to disagree with me, that's fine. It is a major issue. It is a false gospel. If you are teaching that Jesus Christ had to burn, any part of the Godhead had to burn in hell, you are teaching a false gospel, a false God and a false gospel. There's no burning involved when you get saved. Again, the Roman Catholic thing. You have to burn for a while in purgatory. You know, the blood isn't enough to pay for your sins, you see. It's heresy. It's complete heresy. Right? So, um, we go over a lot more scriptures there. You know, I'll just show you one more. You say, well, how is it that soul is, is made an offering for sin? Well, I already did a video on that a while back. But Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own burning. No, um, with his own blood. Simple. Okay. And when the Bible speaks about the soul and Jesus and the father and the son and whatever else, it's talking about the same being. And if you're saved, you get it. You say, well, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the body head godly. I get it. Body, soul, spirits, three separate things there. Okay. And with God, they can separate and still communicate with one another. I mean, we've talked about this over the years. If you don't, if you haven't studied it, you know. Okay, but you know, you see there in Acts chapter twenty, verse twenty-eight, it's talking about ref in reference to God being the Father, but it says his, with His own blood. We say souls don't have blood, yeah, but you see, it's speaking of the same being. So the Father can say, "I shed my blood on the cross. My soul's made an offering for sin." Why? It's the same being. That's why Melchizedek, without father or mother. You say, well, Jesus had a father, God the Father, but it, but it's talking about the same being, you see. So if, if you're saved, you'll get it. If you're lost, you just won't. That's all I can say about it. But, uh, yeah. So back to the thing here. Uh, just wanted to put this video out. You know, just thought I'll just do a quick little live stream on this whole thing. Um, but understand something all false religion has to add something to the gospel okay and we're not talking about you know they should do works meet for repentance you know after salvation um you know ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 uh now that i went and stopped the screen share thing i'll just read it to you from my bible here and i want to refer to something else that's very dangerous before i conclude this ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 
For we are his workmen, workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, good works are just common sense. God saved you, you do things for the Lord. Sure, life of sanctification. But any kind of false system, they, they teach you there's more burning, there's more suffering. You have to do a lot on your part and whatever else. And, you know, to try and be saved someday, eventually. Uh, that is not at all what a Bible-believing Christian teaches, you know. Um, so, but I want to just show you something here uh, from uh, this Ruffman Reference Bible. Um, just to show you that you need to be careful what you're reading. And just, you know, I believe it because Peter Ruffman said it. Well, there's a lot of good stuff in here. The Ruckman Reference Bible, you can see there. Um, but I'll read this thing here. Uh, footnote, um, Acts chapter 2, verse 27, the King James Bible says, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, uh, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. And he says here in the footnote, As a man, Jesus Christ had a human body, a human soul, and a human spirit. At his death, his spirit went back to the Father. His body went into the grave, um, of the grave, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, and his soul went straight down to the into the center of the earth through hell here and came out leading captivity captives. All right. Um, so, in other words, Jesus had two spirits and two souls, but only one body. You know, and Ruckman taught the Godhead correctly sometimes, but then he tries to blend it in with the Trinitarian thing. And this whole deal right here is you'll hear this thing, this statement. They'll say, Jesus was fully God and fully man, you know. And uh, no, um, he took on a body of flesh. Sure, that could be tempted to sin, and he never did sin. He took on a body of flesh that could feel pain, and he did feel pain. Um, but he didn't have a separate soul. He had two souls, two spirits. That's nonsense. Okay, and again, where does the Bible say Jesus became fully God and fully man? It doesn't say that. So, just be careful with commentary Bibles. You know, you're better off just with a plain text Bible. So, yeah, there you go, Brother Jacob. Uh, they they call it the hypost hypostatic union. It's philosophy. Um, So, yeah, exactly, Brother Phil. Uh, I was about that to say if he had a human soul, then he is not God. Exactly. Exactly. He couldn't, you know, in him dwell with all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. No, no. If he had a human body, soul, and spirit, well, no. Then he couldn't be God, manifest in the flesh. Um, you know, so, but anyhow, um, that's pretty much going to be it. Um, so, I don't know if anybody had any questions we could go over here real quickly or anything. Um, so, I hope everybody's doing good out there. And uh, just praying about this whole coronavirus nonsense thing. And, and uh, I, I really did figure that they were going to let things go, you know, over the summer. And, and they're just ratcheting up control. Um, it's just, it's disgusting. I mean, shutting off the electricity and water to people, you know, because they, they gather large gatherings and things, you know, just so crazy, you know. Got on stream late. Sorry, is this from the new office? Yes. Yeah, we don't even have any internet anymore um, at our place in Bridgewater. Uh, that's we're still right now. Just to give everybody kind of an update on where we're at, um, we had bought an old ambulance years ago uh, to do a big trip. Uh, did a video on it, four thousand mile road trip um, that we did, and our ambulance. I let it. It has some rear brake problems, so I just. I took the insurance off of it, let it sit on our property, um, just use it for storage for a little bit, because you can store a pretty good amount of things. 
and um, I'm trying to get it back on the road again. So I'm waiting for my insurance card to go through or insurance card to come to the post office here. And then I can register it again, get the registration up to date and then inspect it. Then I can drive it because I can haul 16 foot long anything inside the ambulance. Um, so and it'll haul a lot of weight. Um, so we're waiting to do that. And then I can start bringing my books here. This wall, whole wall right here is going to be my bookshelves. And that wall back in there is going to be some more shelving for things and over there and, and everything else. So, um, so yeah. Uh, how are things going with the new house, brother? I'm always praying for you guys. Um, we were praying for you as well, um, sister. Um, going pretty good. Um, we are, uh, we're, you know, getting some work done and everything else. Um, having some issues with our bank right now. Uh, I ended up buying a, a vehicle on eBay and, and they're really, the bank's really doing some dumb things. So that's kind of stressful because we had, uh, basically our, the truck that I had, it's just too badly rusted. It's, it won't pass inspection this year. So I'm going to have to park the truck in our property and just use it to haul firewood or whatever else until it breaks in half. <laughs> Good old uh, six months of, of chemicals on the road, you know, salt and everything. But uh, um, as far as the garage is concerned, we are going to tear it down. But again, I have to get some things out at first and try to figure out how to tear it down without hurting the house. Um, so uh, that's kind of an update on the, the house there. Um, question, can you blaspheme the Holy Ghost today? No. Uh, that was only there when um, when Jesus Christ was physically on the earth because in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's why he said neither in this world nor in the world to come. So, where do the souls go to sleep during the time of Jacob's trouble? Am I getting that messed up with something else? Um, well, I think that uh, if you look at Revelation chapter 15, I think it is. Let me just look it up here real quickly. Revelation 15, I think it talks about that they're, um, yeah. Um, Revelation 15, verse 2, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Um, so they're in heaven. And uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse uh Verse 9, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that had that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So they go to heaven. The souls go to heaven when they die in the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, What about FAI Studios guy? Ha heard of him? No, I haven't. Um, uh, question, Brother Brian, I know it's off topic, but I'm trying to cut all chemicals out of my life. What do you use for laundry soap? Um, well, we use uh, sort of baking soda, um, baking soda based like laundry detergent. We used to make our own, but it was Fels, Fels Naphtha which my wife found out is actually a form of naphthalene, like napalm. <laughs> so not so good. Um, not real good on your skin, you know, to use a chemical derivative of something that's basically similar chemically to napalm, you know, that burns people's skin off in war. Um, so, yeah, we use a, a, a borax, um, washing soda, and if there's stains, we actually use uh, lye soap regular old lye soap and we have a washboard we have a whole little shed that we use for washing clothes we we're actually doing it this morning got up this morning early and, and we were out there washing clothes for a few hours um off grid no electric the whole deal you know we have these little plungers and stuff that we use special laundry plungers um works a lot better than laundry you know washing machine you get so much more dirt out it's incredible um clothes get really clean and then we hang them outside to dry on our clothes lines um but yeah we you can do laundry without electricity. It's actually a really good exercise. So, um, but yeah, washing soda, borax, 
and live soap is what we use to answer your question. Question, what does, which dispensation is Matthew 10 in? There are verses in Matthew 10 that line up with Matthew 24, like Matthew 10, 22 lines up with Matthew 24, 13. Yeah, it's, it's Jesus speaking to Old Testament Jews that, you know, are going to reject the gospel. And you know, he's talking to the disciples, but they're Jews in the Old Testament. And it's going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble, which is what Matthew chapter 24 is. Um, Okay, here's the verse that got me confused for a second, Revelation 6, 11, let me look it up. Um, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said that unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Um, I guess rest, I mean, they're in heaven, so I would say that they're just resting there. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're sleeping. Just, you know, hey, you don't have to put up with it anymore because your body's dead down there and you know, there's others that are going to die. So, um, that's what I would say to that. Um, question, what does touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father mean in terms of the Godhead? Well, it gets into a big thing. It's just basically that Jesus had to go up and present his blood, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to how to say that really um, you know in order for him to be the sinless perfect sacrifice I believe he had to go up without being touched by anybody because that would defile him his body the body has to go up the souls up there in heaven already and again there's some of that stuff that I don't understand how it works out um, you know so I don't know good question you know how it all works out Having a hard time or problem with my thing over here. Question: Have you heard of Burning Man? Yeah, it's some kind of pagan festival thing where they they like people come and they dress sort of real weird stuff and then they they like burn in that big effigy of a man. Yeah, I've heard of it. Some guy I think jumped into the flames a year or so ago or whenever that was, a couple years ago, whatever it was. So, I don't know if my if this video stream is still working or if it's locked up. I don't know. Okay. Kind of something happened there. I don't know what that was all about. All right. Um. Uh, hey, brother, just wondering about the souls that could not be numbered in Revelation. Uh, how can it all be from the time of Jacob's trouble if most will be dying with the judgments and few left? Um, well, I think it's going to go very quickly. People will just be told, you know, I mean, when the catching up actually happens, their eyes will be open to a lot of things and it'll be, you know, take the mark or die. And a lot of people will choose death. So I think there will be a lot. I mean, there's a lot of people on the earth right now. And so you could have a, a huge number there. Um, so that's how I would answer that. Um, can the feeble minded get saved? There are certain family members I pray for, but I think sometimes they are too gone to understand from all the pharmaceuticals. This has been a reoccurring thought. Well, the problem with that is if they're feeble minded from their birth, I would say, you know, that they're kind of like a child that they wouldn't understand salvation. So the Lord's not going to hold them accountable. But if you get somebody, um, you get somebody that has lived a life of sin, got on pharmaceutical drugs, you know, destroy their their bodies with bad toxic things, um, 
you know, lived in sin for a long time and then they get on pharmaceutical drugs and they start to lose it, you know, in their minds, I would say at that point, well, they're reaping what they've sowed. Tough thing to say, but honestly, I think that that's the truth. So, um, So, okay, well, I'm not going to uh, be on here real, real long. Um, this uh, um, this coming Sunday, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock um, to 12 o'clock, Sunday morning. We're going to be doing that every week. See how it goes. But uh, we're going to talk about um, the thing of, uh, I don't want to say church hierarchy. I'm not even really sure what to call it yet, but is there, what's the structure within the church? The thing of the position of elders, deacons, um, and, and younger people versus older people. And, and we're going to look at that, uh, from the scriptures. Uh, there's a lot of perversion of that in the Baptist churches where the Baptist pastor is the man of God and cannot be questioned. But then the opposite end of the spectrum is no authority. Nobody has a right to, to, be there kind of overseeing anybody um it's just a free-for-all everybody's got their own authority type of deal um what does the bible teach about that uh, what is the position of elders what's the bishop what's what's the point so we're going to be doing a big study on that this coming sunday morning from 10 to 12. so we'll see how that goes uh, we'll, we'll start out the um uh little bible study there on sunday with prayer prayer requests and um, so so um, yeah we'll see how it goes um, so that's gonna be it I guess we'll say goodbye for now and um, do a study on Sunday morning and I'll check out what you had to say there Philip I'll, I'll check into that and um, so I guess that's going to be it. Um, don't fall for this whole coronavirus thing. It's like I showed earlier. I'll just go through it one more time. <laughs> just for those who have just joined in. Um, right there, Los Angeles is going to cut off water and power to homes, hosting large gatherings amid pandemic. Terrible. Founder of the CDC was a Jesuit educated. Marquette University is a Jesuit school. Edward Jenner. This is Grand Lodge of British Columbia and Yukon. Uh, Edward Jenner is a Freemason. He was the guy who created vaccines. Think about that. St. Corona is a Catholic patron saint of pandemics. It's a little Catholic insider joke there um, about calling it the Corona virus. You know, so, um, you know what, I'm not even, I'm not even showing my screen. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me just do that real quick here. You use my brain here for a minute. Um, there you go again. Los Angeles to cut water and power to homes hosting large gatherings amid pandemic. Just rebel against these guys. You know, this is ridiculous. And by the way, if you notice back here, um, this police officer, his badge, he's got his name blacked out there. They're criminals. Okay, when I say police lives matter and you should defend the police and whatever else as a Christian, this is not what I'm talking about right here. Okay, when they start to cover up their badge number and their name and everything else, you're dealing with criminals. Okay, police, the, the Bible says that you're supposed to be there and you're supposed to submit to that authority when they are lawful, when they are there praising those that do good. Okay, when they go bad like this, then you reject them and you rebel against them. Police are to be held to a high standard, right? And this politician here, he's supposed to be a servant of the people, but oh, if you're meeting together, uh, well, then we have to stop you and we're going to shut off your electricity and your water. Founder of the CDC, Marquette University, he's a Jesuit. Edward Jenner, the guy who founded vaccines, is a Freemason. Right there is the website, again, for them. And St. Corona there, National Catholic Reporter. St. Corona is the patron patron saint of pandemics you know essentially it's all a scam brethren that's the whole thing so all right 
So that's going to be it. Um, interesting time to be alive. But uh, we will see everybody on Sunday morning. Thank you very much for watching.